Cancer is a complex disease, which means that many factors jointly influence someone's risk. These determinants include both modifiable risk factors that people can change, such as obesity and smoking, as well as genetic factors that are inherited from your parents. To predict someone's risk of developing cancer, clinicians primarily rely on characteristics such as age, gender, family history, and recent change in weight. Genetic information is not typically considered for most individuals in the general population. After almost two decades of genome-wide association studies, researchers have identified thousands of genetic variants that influence cancer risk. But these findings have yet to be incorporated into risk assessment. One reason for this is that each genetic variant has only a small effect on cancer risk. However, these individual variants can be combined into a score that summarizes one's genetic predisposition to cancer. We call this a polygenic risk score, or a PRS. In the population, the distribution of polygenic risk scores follows the shape of a bell curve. This means that most people will have a PRS in the middle, putting them at average risk, while others may find themselves in the tail ends of this distribution, indicating either low or high genetic risk. In this study, we constructed polygenic risk scores for 16 different cancers using results from all previous genetic association studies, and then estimated the risk of developing each cancer in over 400,000 participants in the UK Biobank cohort. In addition to genetic data, we also included information on the most important modifiable risk factors for each cancer. Our main finding was that taking polygenic risk scores into account substantially improved their ability to predict an individual's cancer risk, even after considering their family history and modifiable risk factors, such as smoking, alcohol consumption, and body mass index. For many cancers, such as colorectal, having a high PRS had a greater impact on an individual's risk trajectory than factors such as obesity, diet, and physical inactivity. However, for other cancers such as lung, modifiable risk factors, particularly cigarette smoking, had a much stronger influence on risk than having a high PRS. Importantly, we also found that no matter what genetic profile someone was born with, everyone's cancer risk can be reduced by lowering or eliminating key modifiable risk factors. For instance, Someone with a high genetic susceptibility to pancreatic cancer could reduce their five-year risk by 35% by adopting a healthier lifestyle. On the other hand, someone at average genetic risk for melanoma who does not limit their UV exposure will have a 36% higher probability of developing this cancer than a sun safety conscious individual with the same genetic profile. In conclusion, our study shows the potential of polygenic risk scores to significantly improve risk assessment for many cancers. Future research is still needed to determine how to effectively integrate genetic risk scores into clinical practice and to ensure that the benefits of genetic data are equally accessible to all.